Greetings, folks, and welcome back to another product spotlight with Douglas Mike and Greenshaving.com. Today, we are going to be looking at Harvest Moon, one of my favorites. All this and more when we get back. Until then. You'll be the life of the party. Well, folks, today, in the moment, right now, in the middle of the freaking desert, I'm going to be digging into one of my favorite scents of all time, Harvest Moon. This scent is so near and dear and close to my heart, it's it's hard to describe, in fact. However, scent note-wise, it isn't hard to describe. I'm about to get into that. Before I do, though, I, I need to tell you that this is, <laughs> it's one of our most epic scents. It's also one of our most unique scents out there. Um, if you don't know this one, you need to. You need to have this in your den. It's not going to smell like anything else in your den. Harvest Moon was the third part of a soap trilogy we did. That's right, we did a soap trilogy. One of two. In fact, this was the first trilogy that it, uh, this is a result from. Uh, the first part of the trilogy, or the first release, was Dixie, which is a collaboration I did with Soap Commander. The second part was the Wow Signal, and the third part is, obviously, Harvest Moon. Uh, the Wow Signal is no longer available, it's been discontinued, and Dixie was a one-off with Soap Commander, which may return at some time, depending on the amount of PMs and emails I receive. Um, but the, the shining glory of all of it was Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon, I went so far as to drive down to Roswell, New Mexico, Fran and I, and uh, do a release on Halloween about four or five years ago. And it was pretty epic. I was wearing my NASA jumpsuit, captain's hat. I was walking around Roswell. Being that it was Halloween, I didn't look that much of a horse's ass. However, inside the museum, the Roswell Museum, people were stopping me and taking their picture with me. They thought I worked there. <laughs> so it was a pretty epic release, to say the least. Um, but memorable scent, for sure. Oud. If you're a fan of oud, especially like smoky, spicy oud, you're going to love this. That's how it starts off, anyways. Oud on top. Smoke, green tobacco, black currant, tobacco absolute. I need to mention there's more uh, tobacco absolute in the aftershave than there is the soap, only because soap as a matrix for a scent is so fleeting. It's so one dimensional. So, I mean, because it doesn't have enough time to really evolve and develop on your face because you're shaving with it. However, that's why you chase it with the matching aftershave, which does have more uh, tobacco absolute, as I mentioned, as well as hay absolute. Uh, which gives you that in the field, uh, spooky carnival night type vibe, which you will experience when you put this up to your nose, if you've ever been to a carnival. <laughs> um, Peru balsam, Spanish moss, and white sage. That gives you that spicy note, the white sage on top, which is pretty much all around me. The desert sage is pretty strong out here in these parts. I've ca called this the barbershop of Mars type scent. It's that spooky, haunted amusement park type vibe. Not Scooby-Doo, more X-Files. But you definitely get that damp, wet feel, the parking lot vibe. And I'm just, really, it's just, there's so much in here. It's truly a shaving experience that you're gonna, it's gonna engulf you more than just shaving. So that, in a nutshell, is Harvest Moon. I might also mention, if you like to do decode stuff, do puzzles, anagrams, like all my labels, you're going to love this one. Anagram much? Yeah. There's a story being told here, folks. So that's that, folks. Another product spotlight from your friend, Douglas Smythe at phoenixshaving.com. Prepare yourself mentally for next week's episode. Ciao.